Yesterday, we were given the President's budget, which outlines the President's so-called priorities. Well, his priorities were pretty clear. Continue to expand government at the expense of the American people. Expand government, a government that is at odds with the freedom, well-being, and prosperity of the American people every single day. Simple truth is, as my friends in the House Freedom Caucus and a large number of my other colleagues in the Republican conference have been articulating, we need to shrink Washington so that we can grow America. We cannot sustain and grow out of the $32 trillion of debt and the $20 trillion of debt that the Congressional Budget Office just outlined that we're going to add over the next decade. We will not, as a country, survive through that if we do not get economic growth to the three, three and a half, and four percent levels that we saw under President Reagan, President Clinton, and in previous years. And you are not going to get economic growth if you do not get the federal government off the backs of the American people and stop empowering them to target Americans, to undermine Americans' freedoms. Biden's budget would increase taxes and implement price controls to the tune of $3 trillion. That's the president's plan. And what does the media do? They, they run around and go, oh, he's reducing the deficit. He's reducing the debt. Yet by his own measures, he'd be increasing the debt another $17 trillion over the next decade. The American people look to this body and this town with utter amazement at how stupid we could possibly be. If you set out and tried to be more incompetent and more stupid than the people that have been running this town for as long as I can remember, I'm not sure how you could do it. Seriously, that'd be a great exercise. Could anybody, if you put together 435 people here, 100 people on the other side, presidents and bureaucrats, swapped out over the last, say, three decades, could it be any worse? It's like William F. Buckley said if he'd, he'd rather be governed by the first, you know, 435 people out of the phone book than the 435 people we send here. Is he wrong? I, I, seriously, it'd be I, it'd, a great inquiry for us to consider. $32 trillion in debt, borders wide open. We've got American citizens unable to carry out their livelihoods, men and women in uniform who are being denied promotion, the ability to do their job in the Defense Department. We've got kids shut out from their schools, forced in the corners wearing masks, mental health issues, set back generations in terms of their academic capability. That's the best we got. That's the best we can do. We reject that. We believe in America. We believe in Americans. We do not believe that investing in Washington, investing in the federal bureaucracy is good for the American people. We believe the opposite. So the president wants to tax and regulate $3 trillion to save increasing the debt $3 trillion over the next decade down to $17 trillion. Ooh, boy, that'll, that'll do it. We propose an immediate savings of $3 trillion right now by cutting back the woke weaponized federal bureaucracy that is undermining the freedom of the American people so that we can make them more free and prosperous so that they can grow this economy so we can shrink the deficit, reduce debt, and reclaim the inheritance of being an American for our kids and grandkids. Think about what Biden's 
budget would do. It would spend a total of $6.8 trillion next year, $500 billion more than this year, $2 billion, $2 billion for the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives to increase regulation of the firearms industry. I got thousands of Texans that I represent who are facing being made a felon because a bureaucrat at ATF decided what precisely a pistol brace might mean for how their gun is regulated. Think about that. There's some guy, some gal sitting in Central Texas, bought a weapon under the law. Now a bureaucrat says, you've got to do this, register this, or you're a felon. Now, I think the court will strike that down as unconstitutional, but why would this body, why would any Republican fund the bureaucracy that's going to make a felon out of a law-abiding citizen back home? So to my Republican colleagues, don't do that. How about $3.9 billion for the Department of Homeland Security's climate resilience programs? I didn't think about that. $3.9 billion dollars for the Department of Homeland Security, which, by the way, refuses to secure the homeland, allows 72,000 Americans to die from fentanyl poisoning, allows cartels to get empowered and slaughter Americans in the streets of Matamoros in northern Mexico without a peep from this administration. Nothing. Let's give that department $3.9 billion for climate resilience programs. Does anybody wonder why the American people look at us and say, what in the hell are you doing? $2 billion increase for the EPA to target American energy. Now, I want to remind people. I want to remind all the kids out there watching this going, oh, oh my God, but the world is going to die. We're going to end the climate change. We're going to get extinguished. Oh, really? Oh, really? Why is it that my Democrat colleagues who believe that the production of CO2 is going to be the end to humanity and the earth as we know it will not remotely consider nuclear power, which produces not an ounce of CO2, but they won't consider it. Why? Because it's a religion. It's climate fetishism. It's about government control. It's about being able to target the oil and gas industry to undermine the well-being of the American people by empowering bureaucrats so they can feel good about themselves while China continues to pump out more CO2 than any other country, ratcheting it up week by week. 1,100 coal-fired plants in China, they build two a week while we sit around and play tiddlywinks with solar panels and windmills, leaving our grid in Texas unreliable, now almost 50% wind and solar, and we have to go, wait, what happens on a windless, cloudy day? Huh, I don't know. How do you want to power up your schools or your hospitals or your homes or your businesses? Could it be that you have to rely on coal or gas or nuclear power? Of course you do! Yet, my colleagues on the other side of the aisle, not here, of course, of course, with all due respect, neither are my colleagues on this side of the aisle, with the exception of the, of the speaker. This is how we do things in Washington. This is debate. Um, a $2 billion funding increase for the Internal Revenue Service is in the president's budget. Now, I want every American to understand that. They just passed a bill last summer, supposedly called the Inflation Reduction Act, that gives the IRS another $80 billion to expand. So that's what the American people want, is it? More IRS agents to go target more Americans to raise at most, by the CBO's own estimate, $100 to $200 billion over 10 years. So you're going to spend $80 billion to go target American citizens to bring in more money by the way, the IRS targets poor people and minorities three to five times more than other Americans. So you're going to go hire more bureaucrats. You've got $80 billion. And what does Biden do? He said, oh, 
that's not enough. Two billion dollars more for the IRS. Genius. $100 million at the Department of Education and grant funding for communities to promote racial and socioeconomic diversity in their schools. $62 million for the DOJ to exploit the FACE Act to target pro-life Americans. We could go on and on. The amount of money given to agency after agency, bureaucrat after bureaucrat, to target the American people, the FBI to target my now friend Scott Smith in Loudoun County whose daughter was assaulted in a school. He dared to go to the school board. He got challenged by law enforcement and the DOJ was going to be putting him on a list as a domestic terrorist because the National School Board Association was colluding with the White House to do so. Is that what we want to fund? A Department of Justice that would put a dad on a list as a domestic terrorist because he went to a school board to try to defend his daughter who was assaulted in a bathroom. That's what this administration wants to prioritize. Funding a woke, weaponized bureaucracy that is undermining freedom. They want to fund the FBI that went after Mark Houck in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania for daring to defend his son when they were outside of an abortion clinic and somebody was challenging his son and they were exercising their First Amendment rights and he defended him without anything significant happening. They were not prosecuted by state law, but the feds went in at a SWAT team, seven o'clock in the morning on a Sunday, his whole family coming on into the house, threatening Mark Houck. Is that what we want to fund? Is that what we want to use the power of government for? How about the $16,000? I know it's just $16,000. I realize that's, you know, chicken feed in this establishment. In State Department funding for a pro-prostitution pro LGBT group in Colombia. Is that how we want our tax dollars spent? That's just $16,000, doesn't mean anything, does it? It does. $1.9 million in Department of Education funding for an Illinois nonprofit that trains teachers to center equity in the classroom. We need our kids to know math, how to read, science, how to lead the world, how to beat China. And we got $1.9 million to center equity whatever the hell that means. $2 million for the State Department's Race, Ethnicity, and Social Inclusion Unit. As if the State Department is out doing wonderful things in the first place these days. How about $158 million in economic law enforcement and military support for Mexico? Pause. Yes, you just heard that correctly. We the taxpayers give $158 million to Mexico for economic law enforcement and military support while we are getting flooded at our border. Cartels are absolutely running amok and owning the state of Mexico as a narco terror state, running fentanyl into America and killing Americans in Mexico. Congratulations, American people. You bought with $158 million a narco-terrorist state that is undermining our freedom and liberty, killing Americans, endangering migrants, endangering Texans. Congratulations, Americans. $30 more, $34 million for the Office of Secretary of Homeland Security, Alejandro Mayorkas. $34 million for Alejandro Mayorkas to screw up America. Congratulations to the American people on how your tax dollars are being spent. $1.7 billion, $1.7 billion for the ATF that I described earlier. That will make owners of the 10 to 40 million pistol braces in the United States felons. $6.3 billion for Anthony Fauci's NIAID, 
which was weaponized to completely lock down the United States and force vaccines on millions of Americans, massively increasing the profit of pharmaceutical companies, Pfizer and Moderna, making like $100 billion, under government mandates for vaccines, government mandates for vaccines with liability protection for the companies for a vaccine that even the morons in the department over at CDC, NIH, FDA are now at least acknowledging don't really do much for transmission. But oh yeah, let's give them $6.3 billion. $128 million for the office of the CDC director who actively misled Americans about COVID vaccine efficacy while CDC and big tech colluded to suppress vaccine information, which we know to be true. We saw testimony yesterday. Our own colleague, Thomas Massey, had his own social media posts being edited and targeted in a disinformation campaign. Because anyone who dared question the wisdom of Anthony Fauci, anyone who dared question the government mandate that you stick a needle in your arm because they say so, because they politicized a virus and a vaccine, you were going to be set aside. There was going to be disinformation. Social media, Twitter, in collusion with all of those guys, shutting down free speech. And we should be horrified that the United States of America, with the First Amendment to the Constitution that is supposed to protect free speech, not for Thomas Massey as a member of Congress, yes, for him too, but for every American, every American, regardless of the, quote, truth of what you're saying, the government doesn't decide what truth is. That's the whole point of free speech. And yet, we're funding the very tyrants in the executive branch, shutting down free speech, mandating vaccines, using the power of government to go after people and shut down their livelihoods, undermine freedom, undermine economic activity, and put us $32 trillion in debt so our kids and grandkids are going to inherit a bankrupt, tyrannical America. We should change that. We should reject that. And the great news is, Americans across this country are rejecting it. They are saying no. They do want to live free. They don't want a government that's shutting down their ability to live free or their kids and their grandkids. They do want to send their kids to schools that teach their kids that America is great and good and teach them the tools they need to succeed in life rather than teach them that they should be ashamed of their country or be a victim. American people under COVID woke up. More parents are homeschooling their kids. More parents are looking for private school. More states are adopting school choice. More businesses are rejecting the mandates and the vaccine mandates. More individuals are saying no to those mandates. God bless the young man who's in the United States Navy who rejected the vaccine mandate. And because of our bill that we finally jammed through in December as Republicans, isn't being kicked out of the military, but he's still being harassed. He's still being denied the commanding officer job he always wanted. He's still being denied the ability to advance. They're going after him to pay the $75,000 of previous student loans. That must end. $122 million for the World Health Organization, which pushed lockdowns, vaccine mandates, and colluded with the Chinese Communist Party to cover up its role in COVID's origin. And now, with this administration, wants to control our health care and control how we're going to deal with vaccines in the future. 
Why would any Republican vote to fund the World Health Organization today? Why? We should not. We should reject that. We're Americans. We decide how we're going to live. $234 million for the EPA's clean water program, so-called, under Waters of the United States, WOTUS, that put a 78-year-old veteran in jail for violating the waters of the United States by digging ditches on his land. That is your government at work, ladies and gentlemen. $456 million for the EPA, quote, clean air programs. Everybody wants clean air. I don't know anybody who doesn't want clean air. I don't know any state regulators who don't want clean air. But what we don't want is that to be used as an excuse to carry out the new methane tax, drive gas prices via the ethanol mandate, and destroy reliable coal and natural gas power plants via regulation, which is precisely what it's going to do. Yet, we're all going to just sit by as Republicans and go, well, ah, oh, shrug. I guess that's just what we do. We got to increase government. Oh, all these kids are running around going, well, we got climate change. What are we going to do? How about we embrace clean burning American natural gas, develop more nuclear power, and recognize that China and India are the ones that are vastly growing and producing CO2 by developing more coal fired plants while we sit around and we play games, as I said earlier, with wind and solar leaving us with unreliable grids, living on unicorn energy policies. $108 million in woke EPA environmental justice funding that will funnel through EPA's new Office of Environmental Justice and External Civil Rights. $108 million of your taxpayer money when we're $32 trillion in debt for environmental justice, you literally can't make up how stupid we are. I, I just literally, you just can't. You're like, like, no, no, no. I mean, can you imagine the founding fathers? Like, Wait a minute, hold on. So in 2023, we're going to be $32 trillion in debt. We're not going to actually secure our borders as a sovereign nation and allow them to be wide open. We're going to submit to the authority of international organizations to tell us what to do, fund those international organizations to tell us what to do. We're going to fund massive bureaucrats to create things like the so-called environmental justice departments with $108 million when we're spending a trillion and a half dollars more every year than we take in. I mean, that's just like the tip of the iceberg. How stupid can a people be? The American people aren't stupid. That's why they look at Congress with utter disdain. But we're stupid unless we change. And that's my request of my colleagues on this side of the aisle is that we demand change. When there's a debt ceiling fight this summer, when the president wants to play chicken and Russian roulette with the debt ceiling increase to borrow more money, to raise our credit card limit, we should demand change. We should demand actual change. We should demand immediate change. When we say return spending for the bureaucratic state to pre-COVID 2019 levels, and when my colleagues on the other side of the aisle and the president say, you can't do that, you remind them about the $122 million for the World Health Organization or the $108 million for the, quote, environmental justice programs. Or the $15 million for the United Nations bodies that developed the Paris Agreement. Just that alone. How about $7 million in the Department of Interior funding for the Monarch Butterfly? $20 million in earmarks dedicated to sidewalks. $20 million dedicated and federal funding for sidewalks. 
Boy, there's a real federal nexus there, huh? Article 1, Section 8, thou shalt fund sidewalks. It's asinine. Yet, that's what we do. It's like breathing for members of Congress. Just keep funding crap because, well, I don't know. I got a dinner to go to, and I can't bother to peel back the appropriations bills or the big omnibus bill that's sent over by a bunch of senators who are running to their state dinners and can't even bother to do the appropriations bills in the first place, including 18 Republicans, by the way, who voted for a $1.7 trillion omnibus spending bill, which I will constantly remind all 18 of them and all Americans of those 18 who voted for a massive $1.7 trillion omnibus spending bill that denied us the ability to secure the border, expanded the size and scope of the federal government, it is not just a singular one-party problem, ladies and gentlemen. This body needs a little religion, actual religion, and a little bit of fiscal sanity religion. We can change that. We can shrink Washington massively. Right now, in year one, we can shrink Washington so that we can get it out of the way and grow our country back to prosperity. That is step one in reclaiming our American birthright. Shrink Washington, grow America. We can save over $3 trillion over the next decade if we cut the funding of the bureaucracy back to pre-COVID levels and cap future growth. Rescind $91 billion of unobligated COVID money just sitting over there right now waiting for a bureaucrat to find something to spend it on. End the unfair, unlawful $400 billion student loan bailout that the president promised that is going to be deficit spending this year. Just boom, $400 billion of 2023 deficit spending. For what? Paying off the loan, some kid who went to college, he's got a sociology degree and hanging out in his parents' basement tweeting and sitting on Instagram and trying to, you know, find a job. Oh, no, we got to pay off that kid's loan. But the plumber who didn't go take out that loan to go to some liberal arts college filled with a bunch of white elite liberals patting themselves on the back for how compassionate they are for brown people. Because that's what they do. Let's pay off their loans. But let's make the plumber eat it. That's crazy. Absolutely crazy. We reward irresponsibility instead of actually telling the hardworking American who does it all the right way, you're the one that gets rewarded. Under no circumstances should Republicans vote to fund, vote to increase the debt to borrow to fund a $400 billion student loan bailout for rich, liberal, white elitists, for the most part, it's a statistical matter, while we're leaving hardworking Americans who didn't take out those loans, or like my wife, the daughter of a single mom, who took two jobs, worked hard to send her to a state university, who worked to pay off her loans. She's still paying them. 20 years since we graduated from law school, my wife is still paying off the remaining vestiges of her law school student loans. After paying her away and getting loans to go to Texas A&M and the University of Texas School of Law, doing the right thing driving a 2000 Corolla with no options for like a decade. That's what you do if you're responsible. That's how you're supposed to live. We can save that money right now and do more good for the American people than funding and paying off these student loans. We can 
reclaim the $80 billion of Internal Revenue Service money that's sitting in a pot over there right now. We can reform welfare programs to get people back to work, protecting Social Security retirement and Medicare benefits in the process. And we can grow America by expanding liberty and promoting economic growth forcing policy changes to make the government do its job, curb regulatory power by enacting the RAINS Act to make Congress decide if the regulations by bureaucrats should be enacted, if they have a major economic impact. These are all things we can do right now and save up to $3 trillion over 10 years as a first step to shrinking Washington and growing America. That's our plan. The President's plan is to expand Washington and undermine America. Does the gentleman need how many for this topic or generally? Um, can we, go, are you on a clock? Can we, why don't we go about 10 or 15 and then yield? Is that okay? I'd yield to the gentleman from Virginia. Thank you, Mr. Roy, for your leadership once again, and in particular on this all important issue of the fiscal and economic stability of our country, but more than that, not just the financial part of it, which we cannot overstate. We can't overstate the harm being to our country uh, from a spending standpoint with $32 trillion in national debt on the backs of our children or grandchildren, $100,000 per citizen. But in addition to that, how that debt and how that spending has accumulated for the purpose of literally harming the American people. How the, our own government has become weaponized against its own citizens, trying to control every aspect of our lives, trying to control decisions like whether or not we can use a gas stove, have or use a gas stove, whether or not we can choose what kind of car we want to drive, uh, whether or not we can heat or cool our homes the way that we want to, whether or not we can exercise our God-given, constitutionally protected Second Amendment rights, uh, whether or not uh, we can make decisions for ourselves on whether or not we can operate our business, earn a living, uh, educate our children the way that we want to without the heavy hand of government coming in. So we've got $32 trillion in national debt, $100,000 per citizen, and what is this president's response with the budget proposal that he rolls out yesterday to increase spending about 56% beyond where it was pre-COVID? So to go from $4.4 trillion in spending, this president wants to increase it by $2.5 trillion to $6.9 trillion. That $6.9 trillion for just one year, mind you, is about $20,000 per American citizen. How many Americans today would vote to spend 20, to borrow and spend, we gotta put borrow in front of all of it, to borrow and spend $20,000 on their personal credit card to do things that are not only helpful to them, but much of which are harmful to them on top of the $100,000 in national debt that we have per citizen today. Thank God for Republicans who are gonna come into the gap and stand on the wall, defend the American people, and bring some stability, finally some fiscal stability to our country, and cut the spending, f deal a blow against the woke weaponized government that is assaulting and harming the American people, and we're gonna do that with the opportunity that we have as we face the debt ceiling limit. We're gonna utilize this opportunity of our newfound uh, congressional house rules uh, that uh, are gonna allow us to put reforms in place for not just this year and next year, but for the future to put us on a path to fiscal responsibility. And Congressman Roy from Texas, I wanna thank you for showing leadership once again on, an, on the most important fundamental issues for our country. Well, I thank the gentleman from Virginia, and I thank him, I thank him for his leadership. Uh, we uh, joined together with our colleagues in the House Freedom Caucus this morning to announce what we believe is the, 
I'd say bare minimum, if you will, That's the right. sort of uh, baseline for resetting the table on how we deal with spending and, importantly, uh, empowering the American people by shrinking Washington and growing America because we trust the people to do it, not government. And that is an age-old debate, but this is something where Leviathan, right, this great beast, mm -hmm. this, this thing we call the federal government, <clears throat> is growing and expanding in power in ways that should concern every American. I mean, just yesterday in the House Judiciary Committee, <clears throat> there were conversations about the power of the federal government being used to chill speech, to target American citizens, to shut down their First Amendment rights. Now think about it. Is there anything more concerning than the power of the government being used to chill the fundamental rights given to us by our Creator, as reflected in the Bill of Rights, than what we're seeing right now, the FTC going after right now, targeting. They want to know, wait, who? Who's involved with all of this, right? They're actually targeting journalists, targeting private citizens. <clears throat> is that what the power of the government is supposed to be used for? I would ask the gentleman from Virginia. Clearly not. And the, the loss of trust and confidence to the degree that it's been lost in the last two, year, two years in our federal government in our election system, in our government agencies, in even our Department of Injustice, I would call it, uh, is just so damaging to the future of our country. How do we get that back? How do we restore it? We start by not funding it, not funding those agencies, those bureaucracies that are perpetuating such harm on the American people. And you made the point earlier today so well that we talk about going back to pre-COVID spending at $4.4 <laughs> yeah. At that point, that was record spending in the history of the country. Right. That was leading us to some, at that point, maybe $25 trillion in national debt, untold amount that we haven't had since World War II. That was the pre-COVID. That was out of hand. That was out of control. It's just this president who's taken it to a new level Ten trillion in new spending in the first two years of administration has never happened before in the history of the country. But it's not just the dollars, which if this was good spending, meaning things that we thought were justified, if you will, or positive things, we don't have the money. We can't afford it. We're bankrupt. But worse than that, when we're spending money literally to make our military weaker, we're spending money literally to keep our border open to the Mexican crime cartels. We're spending money literally to harm our kids in schools. We're spending money literally to try to ruin the country. If you were setting out two years ago to try to ruin the country, what would you do differently than what this administration has done while borrowing the money to do it? Yeah, <clears throat> I asked earlier, if you set out over the last two or three decades to do a worse job than the leadership of this country in this chamber, the Senate, the bureaucracy, and the White House, could you imagine doing a worse job than, than over the last three decades? I mean, in truth, the, the amount of debt that has been accumulated, right? In 2003, when I was a baby staffer for a senator on the other side of this building, the national debt was about $6 trillion. We couldn't imagine it at that time. Right. And it's now $26 trillion more than that. And the president is patting himself on the back for saying, well, we're not going to increase the debt by $20 trillion. We're only going to increase it by $17 trillion over the next decade by taxing and regulating the American people into oblivion. I would just ask the gentleman, last question here, and then we're going to in a couple of minutes, uh, I want to yield to my friend from West Virginia. But would it surprise the gentleman that we're spending $158 million in economic law enforcement and military support for Mexico? So again, the American people, you and I, we are funding to the tune of $158 million Mexico's law enforcement and military while it's becoming a narco-terror state, cartels are literally killing American citizens in Mexico, infiltrating our country, 
causing 72,000 dead Americans from fentanyl poisoning. This is the thing the American people don't understand. These gentlemen agree. So we're borrowing an additional $150 million to send it to a Mexico that is controlled by the crime cartels right. so they can utilize that funding to invade our southern border with the individuals who are allowing to pass through their country, Correct. trafficking drugs, human trafficking, sex trafficking, who knows what, hundreds of thousands every month, but yet let, we're going to borrow $150 million to send it to them to help them do it. That's correct. And if the gentleman doesn't mind, I'm going to end here with a few minutes on the border and then yield to the gentleman of West Virginia, and I thank my friend from Virginia for coming down. Thank you, Congressman Roy. And so on that point of what we're funding, four and a half million encounters of illegal aliens at the southern border since the beginning of the Biden administration. 7,000, 8,000 migrants crossing a day. 1.3 million gotaways. Nearly 1.7 million illegal aliens released into the United States. That means we've released more into our communities than the population of at least 11 individual states. Under this administration, there's been surges of known or suspected terrorists at the southwest border. Zero in fiscal year 19, three in fiscal year 20, 15 in fiscal year 21, 98 in fiscal year 22, 53 so far after one quarter in fiscal year 23 of individuals that are affiliated with known or suspected terrorists at the southwest border. Last summer, 53 migrants died in a tractor trailer in San Antonio, which I represent, cooked in the Texas heat. And that is somehow compassion. 880 migrants have died crossing the U.S.-Mexico border in fiscal year 22. And that does not count the thousands that have died across South Texas and other places and ranches. Doesn't count the little girls sitting in stash houses as we speak, getting sold into the sex trafficking trade, while Mayorkas and Biden fiddle, while our nation's borders are burning. Just last week, four Americans traveling to Mexico, one of them a mother of six, they were attacked by cartels in broad daylight, Two were dead, two are getting care. And we give $158 million to Mexico for law enforcement and military. This is why today I'm reintroducing my legislation to designate these drug cartels as the terrorist organizations that they are, so that any individual associated with them that provides material support to a designated FTO would be sanctioned and could be pursued Lawfully, materials include but is not limited to providing weapons, safe houses, lethal substances. Representatives and members of a designated FTO would be subject to removal. Financial institutions could be targeted. But the main point is to make clear that these dangerous cartels are the equivalent of ISIS and Al Qaeda right off our border, killing Americans, killing Mexicans, turning Mexico into narco terrorist state giving China an avenue to get to the United States to pump fentanyl into our communities. And this administration is doing nothing. And this Congress must not continue to fund a government that is at war with the American people, funding a woke, weaponized federal government that is undermining our freedom, undermining, undermining our prosperity, undermining our liberty. It is our duty as Republicans and all members of Congress to use the power of the purse to defund the executive branch that is tyrannically at odds with the well-being of the American people. And it merits at least one final repetition that this great country racked up the level of debt that we currently have today relative to the size of its economy in 1946. But why was that? To rid the world of fascism to confront our enemies, defeat those enemies, and protect this great country. And then we embarked for 50 years and grew ourselves to the point we, to be able to balance the budget by 2000. With strong economic growth, it took that much time 
And here we sit today in 2023 with $32 trillion of debt sitting at the president's own admission of 60 basis points economic growth this year. He wants his grand solution to be, oh, we'll just rack up $17 trillion more debt in the next decade because I'm going to save $3 trillion by taxing the American people and regulating the American people. It doesn't work. This is President Biden's actual form of voodoo economics. He's going to level this country, layer mountains more debt on our kids and grandkids, all while funding the very things that are undermining our ability to have economic growth, prosperity, and freedom. As I noted before, the millions of dollars going to the EPA to turn an American citizen into a felon and put him into jail because he had a pond on his ranch. The millions of dollars in the name of clean air that is going to regulate with methane regulations to drive the price of gas, the price of energy up for the average American. Every single American should demand of his or her representative in this body that we stand up to a tyrannical executive branch overstepping its bounds, undermining our freedom, undermining economic growth, and every member of this body should look to cut spending this year of the federal bureaucracy, return it to pre-COVID levels as a baseline, save $3 trillion by getting government out of the way, Restore economic growth and hope and opportunity for our kids and grandkids. Stop funding the very things that are undermining our well-being. Secure our country. Secure our border. Have a sparingly used but lethal non-woke military that will kill people and destroy things when they need to. And restore the greatness of this country by shrinking Washington and growing America. And with that, I would yield back to the chairman.